Mark, before the conflict, before the conflict, we had uh, a situation where we were training Ukrainians and we were also sending equipment over to Ukrainians, some of which, particularly anti-tank equipment, and we'll come back to that, but appears to be highly effective. But we are now ratcheting up in terms of what we're sending them during a conflict. Yes, that's right. I mean, Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, is now considering sending a system called Starstreak, which is an anti-air defence system. Uh, It is probably one of the most powerful portable air defence systems that's out there. It can go four times the speed of sound. Mm. Uh, It can travel four miles up. Uh, So even the high-flying aircraft are at risk from this particular... So in a sense... In a sense, that's us contributing towards a no-fly zone, effectively. Well, it is. Um, If it makes it it, uh, impossible for Russian aircraft to fly in certain areas, then that would be. Now, we're not sure how many of these Star Streak anti-air defence systems they would send and quite how they'll get them in is another matter. Clearly, Russia has warned about uh, lethal aid going in Uh, which will, of course, be used directly against its forces. So there's no doubt it is an escalation. Mm. The training of the Ukrainian forces in the years before Russia went in, that's one thing, 22,000 Ukrainian members of the Ukrainian armed forces trained in the use of these NLAW anti-tank missiles. Which appear to be amazingly effective. Well, they are incredibly effective. We've seen the images come out and we've had all kinds of claims from the Ukrainian authorities that they have destroyed 335 tanks, more than 1,000 armoured vehicles and taken down dozens of aircraft. Now, we have no way of independently verifying this. However, the MOD in the UK and other Western uh, defence intelligence services have done their own assessments. They've got clearly assets on the ground, satellite imagery, and they say that Russia has sustained very significant losses. Mm,